human's brain cannot change after the prime years of 25 years old. First myth debunked. Learning and neuroplasticity continues throughout life. In this video, we are going to dispel another five big myths and mistakes about learning and the brain. Are you ready? Buckle on. Hello, good morning. As you can see, the sunshine is beautiful. Welcome back or welcome. And what's all those beetles? This is plastic. You see that connection right there? No brain there, Priscilla. Plastic is a polymer that is made out of crude oil extract and acid. And then the manufacturers can shape plastic into anything they want with pressure and heat. And yes, our brain is also very plastic, which means our brain is very shapeable. That is where neuroplasticity comes in. So our brain is made out of a lot of cells called neurons. They look like this alien octopus cells with the head of the octopus being the dendrite and then the bottom leg being the axon terminals and fibers and then that connects to other heads of the octopus and then those neurons form pathways and I guess my brain you get neuroplastic and how does that everything connects to play? Play is the portal to neuroplasticity by Andrew Huberman Play means that we're exploring different possibilities and contingencies under a safe environment where the stakes are low. And then through exploring things and tinkering, we can find new creative ways to live life. The brain is a muscle. And then what I'm doing? And first, to having a good brain power and cognitive function. Get adequate sleep. I honestly don't have a proper sleep routine. No shit. The statement that brain like a muscle that it can be trained is slightly incorrect, but depends on how you look at the sentence. Let's see how working out facilitates neuroplasticity. And exercise improves neuroplasticity by stimulating new growth of connections between important brain areas. And it also increases your attention, memory, and prevents you from getting neurodegenerative disease. So, is your brain and muscle? No, it is actually an organ without pain receptors, but it can be trained like a muscle. In this fun paper that mentions can you actually train your brain like a muscle mentions logic exercises can improve your brain's function. The pathways of the brains fire together, wire together. But you don't need to do logic exercises to improve your brain. Simply learning a new skill will do. On my way back to home, I wondered how my brain will change in the future. After feeding the hungry hippo, now it's time to travel down memory lane to see how I first encountered this term. Does memory really work like a recording tape when I mental time travel? And how does my memory work when I am learning information? And I created a mental model to sift through many events that happens during my learning career. Stopped until the point where I was studying cognitive behavior and neuroscience classes in University of California at San Diego. I was very really, very nostalgic with my mental time travel. So I bring myself back to the present moment and open my laptop and search up what is memory and how does it all work. As one does, I went into the scientific literature again. I used this app called Research Rapid with an account. You can also connect that to Zotero and Zotero can also be connected to Remnal. And when I read through like two papers from Research Rabbit and Wikipedia, it says that memory does not work like a recorder. Instead, it works like this. Memories are like boxes in the mental space. There are bits and pieces of information that are just scattered around. And when I think and recall on things, they are reconstructed on demand. This is called memory reconsolidation. Hence, the opposite of memory reconsolidation is memory consolidation. When we first encode memory, our memory consolidate, meaning it is 
formed inside long-term memory. Understanding the cognitive processes and how to organize your knowledge in your brain first that makes those apps so powerful. Because I mean, like if we don't understand our first brain, how can we utilize our second brain, right? And this is very similar to how I take atomic notes in RemNote. The particular function that I like in RemNote and Obsidian is graph view and filter function. I can toggle on and off to see what nodes are like orphans or what nodes are connected to each other using bidirectional links i can see how everything is pictured together i don't have to store all the information in my mind i just have to store the connections between each memory box after i have structured and organized my knowledge my first brain and offload it to my second brain i can recall those things when i need them so time to go study now kiddo stop your productive procrastination with learning how to learn yeah study time so my face is so tiny i'm doing the good old accounting Ugh. i'm sure that you guys are tired of seeing this subject from my previous videos trust me i am the same liabilities accounting is like this thing that i have to jump into the ice shower to face it and endure freezing pain to minimize my time spent on studying a subject that I don't like. What should I do? What should I set up my brain to be? Um, how should I phrase this? I'm just being weird today. Sorry for that. <laughs> that laugh is iconic. This chapter 8 liability management. Once and never have to study again once exams come along. And let's clear the fog about the learning first. So suddenly a thought just fly by my mind like clouds in the sky on a stormy day. Do learning styles improve my grades? For this second myth on learning styles improving your academic grade or not, I actually did a fun poll on my YouTube community tab. So the learning style theory states that if I learn in my preferred learning style, it will promote my academic performances such as. So in the past, I used to study lecture, the accounting. There is audio, visual, and reading because I'm reading the text on the screen and listening to the professor and watching the video at the same time. But the knowledge seems to just be floating around in my mental space and none of them are like anchored down. And I kind of screwed up the first exam, I got, which I got a 78% on because I was also very very sleep deprived had a nightmare from my ex chasing behind me no shit like a normal person I spent more time to find the answer and here on research rapid I encountered a three paper the first one is the surprising powerful influence of drawing on memory the second one is pen is all my tier than the keyboard and the other paper is learning styles concepts and evidences this paper covers many interesting concepts and theories on how the learning style came about and how companies use learning style diagnostic tests to help students to find the student's true potential. And this paper also gathered many empirical studies to provide a literature review. What are the interpretations, understandings, and things that I can apply from those paper to life right away? First, the truth is there's no valid scientific evidence that proves that learning styles can increase my academic performances if I use the one that I like. The other two paper about drawing and pen shows that we use more parts of the brain such as abstract thinking, kinesthetic learning, and visual when we draw. So many parts of the brain are activated. That's why multi-modal learning <laughs> works. Let me introduce this cool framework. It's called VARC, which rhymes with ARC, no one's ARC. So VARC stands for visual, auditory, reading, and kinesthetic. Visual ends the word means using your eyes. Auditory means listening to something. Reading means looking at a piece of text. And kinesthetic means by using your hands to do stuff. With many types of inf information, there's eyes, nose, sound, reading. How does the brain process all those information and structurally organize everything? Compare and evaluate information on what to keep and what to not keep, what to pay attention to it, what to ignore. So after debunking this myth to learning about learning, I still don't want to start studying. Is learning about first understanding, second memorizing? It seems kind of straightforward and true, but is it really the case? If when I started this learning how to learn journey two years ago, I made this embarrassing video 
video on how I ace my anatomy tests. I remember of this really cool pyramid called Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid that I've encountered on Google thanks to the power of the goddamn internet. <laughs> first two layers of the pyramid which is remember and understand remember means that we can recall facts and understand means that we can explain how to do a problem and organize and generalize knowledge and then move up the pyramid to levels like apply analyze and evaluate the third level is to apply to apply knowledge to a new situation next level is analyze it means that we can extract information examine the cause and effects evaluate means that we assess information and make a judgment remembering and understanding are actually low stakes of learning but we do not know we can actually skip the remember and understanding part and go to evaluate and analyzing the knowledge directly mm -hmm. questions that i will ask myself would be how does this element contribute to the whole big picture the brain is really powerful like understanding is kind of fast when you get the gist of things understanding is kind of not cognitively tiring after we have debunked those three myths how can i combine everything into my studies. So here's a quick time lapse and guide on how I study. First, I'll create a resource list of all the materials that I have access to, such as the syllabus, the teacher's PowerPoint, lecture slides, textbooks, and internet resources. Just, I will mostly stick to school resources and learning a little bit extra, but just to build my background knowledge in liabilities so I can understand the things that are presented in school. And after I have found those resources, I will look for common keywords in here, such as um, current liabilities, long-term liabilities, warranties, asset liquidity, employee expenses, employer expenses, FICA tax, unemployment tax, medical tax. I will type those list of keywords and then use RemNotes tab function to group each bit of information. Like if this keyword falls under this big chunk, for example, liabilities have two terms under it, long-term and short. Term. When I think of liabilities, I will think of the first big two main ideas. Current liabilities and long-term liabilities. And what is the separation between the two? See, I'm comparing and grouping ideas and see what are the relationships. And, and after that, I will Google some terms that I don't understand after I've created up those definitions and they re really do help me on how I organize the big groups of information. The keyword hierarchy and grouping done. I will use my iPad to draw a mind map when I look at those keywords and think of how I can group those keywords on a visual canvas like this time lapse right here. I will not necessarily follow the organization of textbook headings because that is kind of obvious and I want to make my relearning personalized to myself. It can be very very memorable just to myself. And there's this fun saying that notes are only readable to the note maker. And that's kind of true because I make it very personalized. And this is the finished mind map. And I understand that taking notes in this non-linear strategy will be very, very uncomfortable at first. It is a hard process, but it will pay off in the long run. And, and then I watched the lecture at 2x speed. It just come from my feeling of FOMO, I watch it. And sometimes I do find information that is not mentioned in textbook or something that the teacher reminds us that Oh, this is important. Don't make those stupid silly mistakes. Or, this is a better way to understand X, Y, and Z. <laughs> oh gosh, do you think that I am done with studying after productive procrastinating for like two hours? I don't know. There is even more homework. Because after the declarative memory of facts that I have done dealing with on this mind map, I need to exercise my brain on the procedural memories. Which is just a fancy way of doing problem sets. And the fourth one is knowledge is already fixed and I can know what I need to learn in the future. The reality is there is no limit among knowledges. Knowledge is just an act of creative explanation. This insanely brave, courageous statement is from a book called The Beginning of Infinity. So if we expand on the theory of knowledge, if the limit never approaches anything, we really don't know what we don't know. Everything, the limit is beyond existing. The limit does not exist! So look at this graph. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. When we just know a little bit of knowledge, are we standing on Mount Stupid? And then, once I realize how much freaking thing I need to learn in this field, and I'm not a financial guru after just studying financial accounting for like three months, 
I still have a tall peak slope of a plateau to climb. So I will stay humble and know that I will never know what I don't know. Eh. And then now time to do the problems in McGraw Hill. McGraw Hill is like this little right there. The school forces us to buy the textbook because we have to have access to the question problems that we need the grade for in this course. Isn't that forcing me just to pay 200 bucks for a textbook that I have access to four months? One hour later. And uh, yay, I am finally done with this. The speed of me completing homework is a lot faster once I've structuredly organized the knowledges. Time for a little break session. Aka laying on a sofa and thinking what I'm gonna paint next for my oil painting like next week. So, hey, yeah, it's me in this really weird position picture. And here are some of the things that I found. I know it's very weird. It's like any kid out there. I am filled with joy when I'm finally done with my responsibility. And yeah, we're all in this together. Cause I am done with my work and I don't know what to do. Am I left brain or right brain? I have no idea. Sometimes I sit here on the couch and just visualize how my life or career will turn out into. I think that I might be a fashion designer, a dentist, a doctor, startup guru, a screenwriter, a painter, and the list goes on. Of those jobs then from two subjects, it's science-based or art-based. But is my brain really like, oh left brain is really logical and analytical, and right brain is really artistic in language? University of Utah showed that using brain scans, people do not use the hemisphere of their brain unproportionately because of their personality. Yeah, that is the truth of it. We're not left brain or right brain. I learned so much about my brain during my gap year. I take this time, like free time from studying for granted a lot. But sometimes when I pause to think, or when I need time the most, I don't have enough of it. It's still a really weird concept about the universe. And if you want to do something besides drugs, my friends, don't do it. I encourage you to try things because you're alone. Be curiously fearless and ordinarily mindful. And then here is another take video. Your learn take and own your learning to the next level. Be sure to check out this video on, on applying Bloom's taxonomy with concept note taking. I love you all. Thank you for spending your time with me. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye! Bye bye!